How's it going everyone? John Castillo here. Today we're looking at the Astera Pixel Tube. What I like, what I don't like, and most importantly, is it worth the money? You may have noticed that I don't have it here for show right now, and that's because I'm using it to light up the background. Let me just get a hue light for that real quick. So here's the deal. I love this light. The quality of light is incredible. It's full RGB and it has two hours of battery life at full brightness. More even depending on the white balance or color you're using. And if all that wasn't enough, it's synchronizable with other lights of its kind. DMX programmable, app friendly, infrared remote controllable, and it comes with this cute little stand. Plus it's collapsible. Now that's all great, but I only bought one, and I bought one for its synchronicity, looking towards the future. What I didn't know about this light is that it doesn't come with the remote control, and you need the light bridge to actually use the Astera app. In short, you can't use the full functionality of this light without dishing out an extra 10 bucks for the remote control, or an extra $440 for the Astera Art 7 control interface. Seriously? You couldn't add a $10 remote control for a $600 light? That's just ridiculous. That being said, the light still has a very primitive control interface. It's got a button on this side, which if you press and hold, you can turn it on. Press down the button and hold for five seconds, you'll enter blue mode and it'll start flashing like that. While flashing, you can press and circulate through certain colors and then eventually you'll get to different white balance values, which you can find the values for in the manual. And then you'll get back to the colors. Press and hold for another second, and then it stabilizes and you're in business. But that's all the versatility you get. Those colors at 100% brightness. The only way to adjust brightness is to physically move the light. Seriously, Astera, you couldn't have included the $10 remote control? Actually, I'm gonna turn this other light off so you can see the light quality. There you go. Let's get it a little bit further away. Looks pretty good. Anyways, as you can see, it's pretty bright. So the way I've been controlling brightness is of course with distance or with bouncing the light off of another white wall. So yeah, I'm a little salty but that's just because I actually really like this light. I also own an Aperture 120D Mark II, which is what I'm using to light this shot right now. And there's just so many times when I'm gigging that I do not want to bring that light. Because as great as it looks, you have to... You have to haul this around. Now, taking this on a gig can be the difference between driving or taking public transportation. So depending on what I'm doing, I don't wanna to have to take this entire thing as well as a tripod when this is the size of a tripod. Plus it's battery powered and I just have to, boop, done. Put it on a stool or a chair, that's usually what I do. Or another example is when I'm shooting B-roll. Instead of adjusting this entire massive light, because if you haven't seen the Aperture 120D in person, it's pretty big, it's bulky. It doesn't work in every single room. So I need to shoot some B-roll in the kitchen. Done. That's what I love about this light. Hi, it's John from last week's video. This is a good example of not having enough light to be able to see my face. So I just sort of put this light bouncing off the wall and look at that. Looks much better, right? In fact, having to shoot the B-roll for this video using the 120D Mark II made me reappreciate how much I love this light. That's how much I can review in this video because as I mentioned in the beginning, I don't have all the supplementary syncing tools that are necessary. I will probably eventually make another video once I get those further down the line, but for the time being, still love this light. A little bit bummed out that it doesn't have a remote control. If you've watched this far into the video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. It really helps small YouTubers like myself. Once again, my name is John Castillo. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.